gentlemen, I'm going to invite uh, the makers up and SPRC. Uh, we have a presentation uh, for them. Expressing our appreciation for this family's tireless contributions to us, they cherish <laughs> the music for the contemporary service, song and organizational skills. The entire family's heart and Christian faith have been an immeasurable part of the soul of this church. We will miss you. We are also excited for your new life in Palm City and Anchor. It is a vibrant area for a young family, and we wish you every success. Thank you for your contributions. We have some gifts. The girls uh, got some cross necklaces. And then we got a gift book and a gift certificate for their new home. And then we got them a stone that says, The Lord bless you and keep you. And on the back side, it has Wesley Church on the back. So thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you, and thank you, Brian. Uh, he did this three times today, and he did it because I wouldn't be able to, so.
And now with joy and thanksgiving, let us offer to God the gifts that we have brought. to spread your gospel throughout the earth, and to bring glory to your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> you may be seated. 
and the, we will read the psalm antiphonally. This side of the congregation will read the light type along with me. That side of the congregation will read the light type along with the choir, and we'll sing the response together. And make your face to shine upon us. That we may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples of equity and guide the nations. Today, a story from when my youngest daughter was a little bitty girl. She's about three years old, so a little older than you, but she's about three years old, and the same one that's graduating from high school this afternoon. Well, when she was three years old, she got a splinter right in the palm of her hand. And of course, I needed to take the tweezers to get it out, but she did not want me to do that. And because it was in the palm of her hand, she made a fist like this. And you know how hard it is to get a little kid's hand open? Yeah, 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 yeah. They've got like Kung Fu grip, right? You can't get it open. But, and so we, we spent a long time trying to get her to open her hand so that I could take that splinter up because she was afraid that it was going to hurt. And you know what? She was right. It was probably going to hurt to take that splinter out, but of course, she didn't need to come out, right? It would, it would get infected and it would, it would hurt even worse if I didn't. So that reminds me of a Bible story that we're going to learn today. And Jesus is getting ready to heal a man who couldn't walk. And he couldn't walk for like 38 years, right? But he asked the man a weird question. He said, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be healed? Now that's a weird question to ask, but maybe not. Because if you remember Hannah, she did not want to be healed. <laughs> Right? Because she was afraid. And sometimes that's true for us. Sometimes we're afraid. We don't want to take medicine. Uh, we don't want to have people help us. Maybe sometimes we don't want to give up a bad habit or we don't want to change. And so sometimes we just don't want to be made well because we're afraid. But you see, we can trust God. We can trust God to take care of us. So let's pray that we do that now. Let's pray. Dear God, Dear God, oh, I lost my place. Thank you. Dear God, we know you want to heal us, but sometimes we are afraid. Help us to trust you and let you make us better. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, man. Oh, man. Good job. Good job. 
You did such a good job, you threw me off my, uh, Our scripture reading this morning comes from John chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. Listen to the word of God. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there, one who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, our text today is the healing at the pool of Bethesda. Uh, Bethesda in Aramaic means house of mercy, uh, and it has become associated, that term, with healing in our own time today. Uh, because many hospitals, healthcare centers uh, take the name Bethesda, including the famous Naval Hospital in Washington, D.C. Uh, if you read the Wesley Word this week, you'll see I got into a little bit of textual criticism there uh, for your benefit. Uh, it was a place where, uh, at certain times, it doesn't say how often, certainly we get the impression that it wasn't regular. Uh, that an angel would come down and trouble the waters of this pool, and the, the first person who got into the pool when the, water, the waters were troubled were healed, was healed. And so this became a place where, where the sick would gather. And, and you can imagine, since this was an unpredictable event in terms of its timing and its frequency, and since it was a first come, first served kind of event, that it probably people were kind of camped out there. Now, um, I, I don't know whether this individual we are, we're reading about today had been carried back and forth each day by family or friends, or, or if he just kind of lived there. Uh, but you can imagine, for 38 years, day after day after day, he was there, and of course, being unable to walk when the waters were troubled, someone got in ahead of him. So 38 years, day after day, of disappointment and continued disability. And, but then Jesus shows up. But then Jesus shows up, but, and he's going to heal the man. But before healing the man, Jesus asks him what, to our mind, is a very strange question. He asks, do you want to be made well. That seems like a strange question to us. Of course he wants to be made well. But does he? Because there's going to be some consequences. There's going to be some changes that are going to take place. And so why would someone not want to be healed? That's a question for today. Why would someone not want to be healed? And, and I think there are several answers just like there are several kinds of healing. Uh, but, but to illustrate that, to get us started, I've got a video clip for us uh, from the Monty Python film, The Life of Brian, uh, which is one of my favorites. I cannot recommend it to you for your Sunday afternoon viewing. So I just want to be clear, 
I am not recommending viewing this film. Uh, because in the clip I'm going to show you, I had to dub it twice in a two minute clip. So, just so you know. Uh, but if you're not familiar with the story, the story follows the, the um, in, in 1960s British comedy style, the, um, the life of a Jewish man living in Jerusalem named Brian, with a Jewish name, Brian. Um, and uh, now you know why it's my favorite. Uh, whose, whose life parallels uh, the life of Jesus and, and coming into Jesus' last days in Jerusalem. Uh, and uh, here we're going to see the scene uh, with Brian, with Brian in it. He admits that himself. Um, he now has a responsibility to be productive, and he's not maybe ready for that. Also, if you look forward in John chapter 5, you'll see that um, the, the man who was cured by Jesus in this, this instance uh, got, actually got in trouble for being cured because he was cured on the Sabbath, not unlike the man born blind in John chapter 19, uh, not everybody is going to get on board with your healing story. Uh, you run a risk if you run around with a healing story. Healing may mean letting go of an, of an old identity or a bad habit. We know how quickly we can become identified with our habits and how quickly we can even become identified with our limitations and our infirmities. They become part of who we are in a way. And sometimes it's hard for us to let go of that because sometimes it's hard for us to imagine what life will be like without them. They are painful. They are difficult, but at least they are familiar. Healing may mean the end, may mean ending a toxic relationship. Now sometimes healing can heal a relationship. Sometimes we have relational healing, we can have reconciliation, but sometimes those relationships are just toxic. And healing may mean bringing those to an end, or at least changing them a great deal and, and creating better boundaries. Maybe we're not ready for that. Healing 
may just involve too much change and too much work or too much temporary pain. We may, we may find that we're, we're better suited to that kind of ongoing background pain that we're used to versus the pain that's going to come from the uh, surgical procedure or whatever it might be. We, we, we are more comfortable with the splinter than we are with its removal. And so this, this, this fear, this fear of change, this fear of discomfort, this fear of difference, um, this, this fear of, of loss, even losing the uncomfortable but familiar, makes us sometimes reluctant to seek and receive healing. And of course, healing might come in, in many forms. Uh, we, we, yes, we, we, talk about, we talk about physical healing, that's kind of the top of the list, that's what comes to mind the most, but I want to suggest to you that that isn't even the best kind of healing, or at least the most important kind of healing that God offers us. Because in addition to physical healing, we know that we need mental healing, and emotional healing, and spiritual healing, and moral healing, and relational healing. We need to be healed of our broken relationships. We need to be healed of our bad habits. We need to be healed of our emotional hang-ups. We need healing in all these areas. So last week, I, I, I talked about our fear of big picture change as we talk about the new kingdom and how, how, how much we, we want to embrace that, but how much we also fear it at the same time. But this week, I'm, I'm going to bring us down to a more micro level and ask us what change does God want to do in us? And are, are we open to that? Are we, are we open to having our, our life rearranged? Are we open to uh, finding a new way of living as the ex-leper had to find a new way of living and as I'm sure our, our invalid in uh, John chapter 5 had to find a new way of living? Are we open to that? Are we open to reconcile or at least redefine, if not ended relationships that are unhealthy? Are we open to getting rid of bad habits and hang-ups? Because God can do it, God will do it, but we have to let him. And we have to be open to the process, however painful that might be. So I ask you, what areas of life do you need healing in? Do you need physical healing, emotional healing, relational healing, spiritual healing? Where do you need to be healed? Where do you need to seek God? And are you willing to let him do that work in your life? And are you willing to let him make that change in you? In other words, do you want to be made well? We're going to do our prayer time a little bit differently today. I'm going to open this service to a time of prayer. And this altar will be open. You can come and kneel if kneeling is difficult. You can come and sit on the front pew. Uh, as you come, I'm going to assume that you just want to pray. Uh, you, with yourself, if you would like me to come pray with you, raise your hand. If I've got a few prayer warriors in here, you know who you are. If you see me get backed up, come and pray with folks too. Or, of course, you can always pray where you are or pray where you are at home. Whether it's physical healing or emotional healing or relational healing or spiritual healing, God wants to offer it to you today. Now, having said that, I can't promise you that you will get the outcome you have in mind. Because there are also stories of God not healing people physically. Paul is a good example. He's thorn in the flesh. I'm a good example. Uh, Joni Erickson Tata, who's paralyzed, is a good example. And God used that. God used that for his glory and the good of his people. And so... I can't promise you what outcome you'll get, but I can promise you that God will transform whatever you bring. 
either by healing it or by using it for your good and for his glory. And so now I just invite us to enter into a time of prayer. And either where you are or down front here where you are at home. And uh, you might say, well, I don't, I don't have anything to pray about. Well, I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. But let's say you, you don't. Um, well, I'll tell you what, then, then, then pray for the other folks that are praying in this room or at home. Or I'll tell you what, open, pick, grab your phone, open your news app, right? You'll find something to pray about. The, the, the violence and, and the disorder and the hatred and the racism and the just the, 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 the gunk of our society. Because God wants to heal us. God wants to heal us. God wants to heal our homes. God wants to heal our our community. God wants to heal our planet. But he'll only do it if we pray. He'll only, he'll only do it if we are open to it. So now let us be in prayer together. This altar is open.
gracious, loving, good and healing God. God, our needs just overwhelm us. God, even if we just look in inside of us, we see so much, we see so much pain and so much brokenness, brokenness in our bodies and brokenness in our spirits and brokenness in our relationships. And, and God, those needs overwhelm us. And if we look around us, we see those around us who are, are sick and hurting and broken too. And if we look beyond that to our community and our world, God, we just stand, we just stand overwhelmed. Maybe overwhelmed is, is what we need to be. Because our overwhelmedness drives us to our needs, drives us to our dependence upon you. God makes us makes us despair of any chance that we have to fix things. Uh, that our own our own work and our own wisdom and our own ingenuity and our own creativity, God, it 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 it, it utterly fails in the face of the great needs that are within us and around us. So God, we pray for the only thing that has ever worked and the only thing that will ever work to, to fix the brokenness in this sinful world. And that is the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of your Holy Spirit working through your, your Word and your Church. And so God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon this place, upon these people, upon this pastor. And bring healing, healing of body, healing of mind, healing of spirit, healing of relationships. God, reconcile and restore and redeem and rescue each and every one of us. We pray for ourselves and our families and our church and our community. God, for this world, the brokenness of hatred and bigotry and, and violence and, and pride and greed that, that, that infect this world and this world. God, heal us. Begin with us. And may the healing power of your spirit ripple outward from this place into our homes, into our community, into all the people all around us. Bring healing, Lord Jesus. God, we pray that you hear us now as we together lift up our voices in the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Those of you who are at the altar do not feel rushed. This place is still open to you until you are finished with your business with God. I invite you then, the rest of us, to stand and be close.
benediction. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you now and remain with you always. Let us go into the world to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Experiencing grace, exploring truth, expressing love. Amen.